Hi, so I know there were a lot of steps to problem 28 in homework 2, and so I'm going to create a video of those. So the first thing we did is we, I've got Power BI launched, I'm going to import data from Excel. I'll go select my file that I got down from the homework problem. And that's going to launch Power Query. I just needed the transaction sheet. If you take a look at that Excel spreadsheet, there's just one sheet on it. So I'm going to get the transaction sheet and click Transform Data. That launches Power Query. Now, if you remember, every row here represents a sales order number. And I want to be able to roll this data up. I want to summarize it by customer and by year. Well, there's a few cleaning steps I got to take. I'm going to go clean up column 18 and 19 because they're empty. Um, and that actually really doesn't matter in the long run. But my date, that's where I'm going to get my year, but it's not at the year level right now. It's at a specific day. So I'm going to click on SO date. I'm going to go to add column. I'm going to pull down on date. I'm going to select year, year, and that's going to extract out the year. So I can use this to group now. So I'm going to group by the customer and the year. Okay, so I'm going to go back here to home. And there's this group by option on the home ribbon. I need to group by two variables. So I'm going to click on advance. For the first one, I'll click on and I'll choose to go out of grouping I'm not seeing customer here oh, my uh, scroll bar must be gone I've changed the settings so I'm going to select customer name on the first one and then I'm going to select year on the second one uh, Use my keyboard to go down to year. And those are my two bucketing variables. So I'm going to create number of customers times number of year buckets. And then I'm going to fill them with my summarized profit, my aggregated profit. So I'm going to sum. And then it says, what column do you want to sum? And I want to sum profit. I click OK. And now, notice I have fewer rows than I used to. I have 132. I used to have a lot more rows than that. I'll let you prove that out for yourself. But now, for if I sort this, see, I've got brew in here four times, one for each year. I've got bluebird cafe in here four times, one for each year. And for every customer year combination, I have a profit for that year. And if you undid this, if you deselected the sorting and the grouped rows and you got back, like I could click on inserted year or grouped rows. Yeah, inserted year. Take a look here. If I scroll all the way down, there's more rows than I had before. And that's because when I group by, I compressed my rows into customer and year groups. But now I need to be able to compare year 24 with year 25 across each customer. And so I'm going to take this year column and I'm going to pivot it out so that I get a year column header for every year. So I'm going to get four new rows and four new columns. I'm going to get 2023, 2022, 23, 24, and 25. They just aren't in order right here. So to do that, I'm going to click on the year column. And then I'm going to go to transform, and I want to unpivot or I want to pivot this column. So I, when I select pivot, it says, "Hey, looks like you want to take the values in year, and you want to make new columns with them. So that'll create one column for each unique year. What do you want to stick under those columns? And I'm going to say profit. I want my profit numbers to be there. So I click OK." And notice it moves them out. And now if I go look, I have even fewer rows. I have one per customer because I just moved my years out. So if you want to take a look and see what happens, take a look at Brew. See, I've got 318 for 2023 
808 for 2025. If I go back before I pivoted, I got brew 2023 is 318. 2025 is 808. You can compare those. It's the same numbers, it just almost like transpose them. But now I only want 2024, so I'm going to highlight 2022 and 2023. Right click and remove columns. Just to make it prettier and it's going to be easier, I'm going to move 2024 to the left. And I could go in and I could add a column. And I could create a custom column here. So in class, we loaded it in Excel and then we created that new column, but I'm going to do it right here. I'm going to create a custom column. We're interested in the percent difference. So I'm going to call mine percent difference. And its formula is going to be 20, oops, let's get this right. I got to start with parentheses. It's going to be 2025. See if I start typing open square bracket, I get there. Minus, click open square bracket, 2024. And then I'm going to divide it by 2024. And that's going to be my percent change from 2024 to 2025. <clears throat> and you'll see here it's in decimal form. And when we do logic on it, we want to come back to decimal form. But to just make it pretty, we'll actually click right here and we'll change it to a percentage. Okay, and then we wanted to actually, in the assignment, it wanted you to use conditional formatting to highlight those that had greater than 30% increase and those that had greater, less, greater than 30% decrease. And so we're just going to go ahead and create two new custom columns. And again, in class, we did this in Excel, so I'll say greater than 30% increase. And we're just going to do an if statement. We're going to say if percent difference is greater than 0.3, then put a 1 in this column. If not, put a 0 in this column. Let's see, what am I missing? I think it should be fine. I did give it a second. Well, I'm not sure what it's looking for. So guess what? If it doesn't show, it's saying it's expecting another parentheses. But that doesn't make sense because I've just closed it. So if I close it again. Anyway, it doesn't make sense. See, I, I have no idea what's going on here. So guess what? We're going to say yes. We're going to keep this and then we're going to come back here and we're going to close and apply and load it back into Power BI. And to get at it in Power BI, we have to go to our data view. There's our percent difference, and we're just going to add a new column here, and we're going to do the same thing. So we'll call it greater than 30 profit equals if percent difference is greater than 0.3, put a 1 in here, otherwise put a 0, and hit enter. And then I'm going to create another one. I'm going to do new column. I'm going to call it greater than 30% loss is equal to if open square bracket percent difference. Hit enter to accept the one that was highlighted. If it's less than negative 0.3, put a 1 in here, otherwise put a 0. And then I can use these when I go to create the visualization. Remember, the homework assignment said use conditional formatting. There's probably a way to do it in a table. When I looked at the solution, they did it like this. So we'll follow their solution. Um, I'm going to put a card in here. And then on that card, I'm going to drag greater than 30% profit. And you can see it's, it defaults to summing right there. It sums. And so I have 15 customers who had a greater than 30% increase in profit from 2024 to 2025. I'm going to add another card. 
put them side by side here. I'm going to take greater than 30% loss and drag it down here. And you can see I had 12 customers that had a greater than 30% loss from 2024 to 2025. And then you can modify these cards. So once you've got like a visualization item here, over here on your visualizations palette, you see I can click on format your visual. I can turn the category label off. Like there may be a way to change it. I can't call out value. Nope. And I'll do the same thing here. Turn the category label off. Let's see, is there a way to do a title? Might be able to do a title. Let's give it text. And we'll say number of customers with greater than 30% loss. And I could actually change it. I could make it bigger. I could make it heading two. Try that again, heading two. Make it bigger. And then I could go do the same thing on this other card, but I just wanted you to see that we could format it. So you can make it pretty like that. Anyway, so you get the idea. Remember that we, all we did is that we rolled up our data at a customer year level and then we pivoted out the year across the column headers and then we did a, a calculated field to calculate the percent difference between 2024 and 2025. So have fun.